Welcome to hemolytic anemias, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. We have the following take-home points. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia is classified based on the presence of warm or cold antibodies. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia is primarily driven by IgG or complement-fixing IgM antibodies. To manage autoimmune hemolytic anemia, treat symptomatic anemia and stop autoantibody production with immunosuppression. There are three major mechanisms of immune-mediated hemolysis. The first is mediated by pathogenic IgG antibodies, which recognize and bind to Rh-type antigens on the red blood cell surface. IgG-coated red blood cells are recognized and cleared from the circulation by macrophages in the spleen. Partial phagocytosis in the spleen with loss of red blood cell membrane forms peripheral blood spherocytes. IgG-mediated hemolysis is the primary mechanism of warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia. The second major pathway is mediated by pathogenic IgM antibodies directed against erythrocyte glycoprotein antigens, big I or little i antigen. The IgM autoantibody can span erythrocytes and cause agglutination, hence the name agglutinins. IgM agglutinins activate the classical complement pathway which results in the red cells being coated with C3D. C3D coated cells are cleared by Kupfer cells in the liver and destroyed from the circulation. IgM mediated hemolysis is the primary mechanism of cold agglutinin disease. The third major pathway is complement mediated red blood cell lysis. IgG antibodies and IgM agglutinins, which bind complement, can activate the terminal complement pathway which results in the formation of the C5B6789 complex or the membrane attack complex, MAC, which directly lyses red blood cells. The most important difference between warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia and cold agglutinin disease is the temperature at which antibodies are active. Warm antibodies bind optimally at body temperature, that is about 37 degrees C or 98.6 Fahrenheit while cold antibodies bind optimally at temperatures much lower than body temperature. Warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia is primarily driven by IgG antibodies against Rh-type antigens on the red blood cell surface. These antibodies can also be IgA or IgM. About 40% of cases are primary or idiopathic, while up to 60% of cases are secondary, that is associated with an underlying condition, including infection, autoimmune disease, lymphoproliferative disorders, and immunodeficiency. Cold agglutinin disease is typically caused by pathogenic IgM antibodies directed against erythrocyte glycoprotein antigens. These antibodies typically fix and activate complement. Primary or idiopathic cold agglutinin disease occurs in the absence of an underlying disorder. Secondary cold agglutinin syndrome occurs in the setting of an underlying disorder such as a viral infection, autoimmune disorder, or lymphoid malignancy. Paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria is an acquired hemolytic anemia that is typically seen in children following a viral infection. It is caused by an IgG autoantibody that fixes complement in the cold and, upon rewarming, causes intravascular hemolysis and hemoglobinuria. A diagnosis of autoimmune hemolytic anemia is considered when anemia is found in the setting of hemolysis as demonstrated by elevated LDH, undetectable haptoglobin, and hyperbilirubinemia. In warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia, the direct antiglobulin test, or DAT, is typically positive for IgG. The DAT can also be C3D positive. The peripheral blood film demonstrates spherocytes. In cold agglutinin disease, hemolytic anemia is also present. On the DAT, the IgG is typically negative and the C3 is positive. Occasionally, the DAT may be weakly positive if an IgG antibody is also present. The peripheral blood film typically demonstrates red blood cell agglutination. Clinically significant cold agglutinin antibodies have high cold agglutinin titers. 
the thermal amplitude or temperature at which the body, the antibody is active, tends to be close to physiologic temperatures, typically greater than 28 to 30 degrees centigrade. For both warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia and cold agglutinin disease, the goals of treatment are to address the symptomatic anemia and decrease autoantibody production. For warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia, symptomatic anemia is managed by transfusion of the least incompatible units available in the blood bank. Glucocorticoids are first-line therapy to decrease antibody production. Other immunosuppression may be considered, including rituximab. For secondary causes, treatment of the underlying condition is critical. In patients who do not tolerate or are refractory to therapy, splenectomy may be considered. In cold agglutinin disease, transfusions should also be performed as indicated. Cold exposure should be avoided. Cold agglutinins do not typically respond to glucocorticoids or splenectomy. Therefore, other immunosuppression is recommended, including rituximab alone or in combination with other agents. As with warm antibodies, treatment of the underlying condition is critical to stopping antibody production. Therapeutic plasma exchange can be used as a temporizing measure to quickly remove IgM antibodies while immunosuppressive therapies take effect. In summary, autoimmune hemolytic anemia is classified based on the presence of warm or cold antibodies. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia is primarily driven by IgG or complement-fixing IgM antibodies. The mainstay of management is to treat symptomatic anemia and stop autoantibody production using immunosuppression. This ends our video on hemolytic anemias, autoimmune hemolytic anemia.